Get ready for Mikey Sun TV. Four, three, two, one, zero. Hey, what's going on, guys? Girls, mini pearls, naked squirrels. How y'all doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Well, we have come to the conclusion of our librarian made-for-TV movies, right? If you've been keeping up, you know I've already done the first two movie review, just discussions. Not so much reviews, just more discussions. And now we are on the third one. This one is called The Librarian, Curse of the Judas Chalice. Came out in 2008. First one came out in 2004, second one came out in 2006, this one came out in 2008. Now, forgive me for having my handy dandy trusty notes. I'm not a professional at this. I'm not going to do 15 dozen different takes to try to make things look like I know what I'm saying and doing. No. I use notes, guys. Why? Because I'm a real guy. For real men. Yeah! Something like that. Anyway, let's get on to this. A wonderful movie, shall we? Again, my notes. Forgive me for looking at the page. Here we go. Cast. We have Noah Weil as Flynn Carson. We have Bob Newhart as Judson. We have Jane Curtin as Charlene. We have Stan... Stana Katik as Simone Renoir. We have Bruce Davidson as Professor Laszlo. All right, let us do the plot synopsis, or as I like to call it, for us real men, the story. Flynn has a meltdown from being the librarian and is soon told to take some time off. He ends up going to New Orleans and soon finds himself teaming up with a lovely woman in search for the Judas Chalice. Along the way, Russians, of course Russians, are also interested as well, hoping the chalice will give unlimited power. But other forces have other plans. And at the end of the day, will Flynn remain the librarian when it's all said and done? Oh, let's find out, guys. Well, we're not going to totally find out, but we might. Now, I do go into spoilers. I talk about the, the show. Uh, it's not easy to talk about these things and not just want to go full-fledged and talk about the whole thing. So, what we're going to do next, guys, is what I like to call things I didn't like or I just thought were kind of odd or funny, kind of weird. Uh, really, there's nothing that I don't like. It's just basically what I, some parts that I might find kind of odd or weird. So, here we go. In the opening, Flynn breaks a vase to find a hidden stone in it. Why break the vase? Was it actually formed inside of the clay of the pottery, or was it just sitting inside the vase all these years? That, that kind of you know, throws me, but maybe it was formed inside the pottery. I don't know. Again, the overused formula of the main guy hooks up with a hot woman to go through the movie. That's kind of the formula, you know. The cliche of these kind of movies, or really any movie for that matter. There always has to be a man and a woman that meet up somehow and have to go through the adventure together, right? Flynn is getting a shave at the barber shop. The shaving cream is different in most shots. Now we know whenever you put shaving cream on, it starts disintegrating and going away and all that. And you can see it like in every other clip, it was it was totally different. A lot of times I don't really pay attention to stuff like that, but it just kind of popped out and it was noticeable. So <laughs> always the bad guys say kill him, and always take forever and never kill the main guy. How many times have we seen movies where they're like literally pointing a gun right at the, right at our good guy. Kill him. 
and they take forever and they talk for like 10 minutes and and, and then something wonderful happens and the good guy you know gets away happens all the time right they find this ship from the 19th century that no one has found all these years and from what I can tell it's not even really hidden like just back behind a few brushes you know trees or whatever or something it's like just right there so uh, either no one has ever found it or someone has found it and not cared to search it or something I don't know anyway it kind of stuck out like a sore thumb to me right there I instantly was like did they not see that after all these years <laughs> they break open a door that they said was solid steel but when broken it sounds like wood Now that was one of those moments where I was waiting for it to happen because I was expecting, I was kind of expecting for it to sound totally different because I, you know, it, that happens sometimes in, in uh, TV shows, movies, stuff like that, that the sound just don't exactly match up sometimes. And that was one of those moments I thought, I'm going to pay close attention. And sure enough, it didn't really match up to me. Simone, now here comes a good spoiler, all right, so be ready. Simone is a vampire fast powerful can, can transport vaporize but get caught but gets caught so easily how did she make it to just over 400 years old is she just now all of a sudden slowing down is she getting a little old maybe she's getting caught a little easier I don't know let's see Flint here comes more spoilers guys like I said we're talking about the show okay Flynn puts a stake through Vlad. He's on fire, screaming. Flynn is standing right by him, like literally face to face. And then Vlad explodes, and Flynn doesn't even seem to flinch. It's like they could have had him at least react a little bit, but they didn't. Which I thought was kind of strange. Alright, let's get on to the good stuff. Guys... This is what I liked. I like the movies. Alright. Basically, in a nutshell, I like these movies. They're great. I can watch them pretty much all the time. Uh, they're right there with the best of Indiana Jones, in my opinion. They're good. So, what I liked. Number one, the opening shows us clips from the first two movies. It was a nice uh, way to kind of look back. Uh, they were showing like little clips and playing music along the way and just kind of taking us on a journey kind of back uh, through the first two movies. I thought that was really cool. Uh, again, we have returning characters. Uh, the opening gives us a little action sequence with a James Bond feel and a sword fight. So I thought that was pretty cool. Always a new area to explore in the library. It's ever expanding and you'll notice that in these movies and the TV series. Ooh, ooh. Did I say TV series? Wait till the end guys. Wait till the end. We have a drunk Charlene. Yep. We have a slightly tipsy Charlene. I like that. The hot woman sidekick. Wow, <laughs> wow. Not bad to look at, guys. And probably for the women, too. More neat riddles and interesting artifacts that play a part in the story moving along. I like those kind of things where this leads to that and this does this and go find that. and then it's, it's, It reminds me of a video game. <laughs> so, I, I like when a movie keeps you moving along. Uh, this movie is different because it's focused in the USA. New Orleans, actually just makes it stand out from the first two movies it's kind of neat you know that they can find some sort of history and some sort of a story and something kind of cool to kind of have it based here in the states you know instead of always having to travel across seas where everything seems to be or down in South America stuff like that so at least this time it's in our in our country and kind of almost makes you feel oh cool you know this is going on in our in our states here Ooh. so I like that um, the taxi driver, Andrew, 
pretty decent character that ends up being there at the right time along the way. He was a good little character, and I like those those characters that kind of pop in and out, and they, they kind of leave like a, a little impression along the way, and he does that, and I liked him. He was your typical black dude from Louisiana, uh, playing the typical part, but he was uh, he did the part well, and I enjoyed his character. Uh, a moment in the pirate ship reminded me of the Goonies. If you watch it, then you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> A different fun storyline focused around vampires. That was uh, totally different compared to the first two movies, and I like that. Uh, something that I was surprised with uh, towards the end of the uh, towards the end of the movie, whenever like the you know the final act's going on and everything's going on, uh, a bad guy uh, gives his life to help. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Simone wanted to see the sunrise with Flynn. Uh, again, kind of more spoiler. She wanted to see the sunrise with Flynn. Being a vampire, uh, they knew it wouldn't end well. Uh, it was a nice way to end their time together and her life. And it was done well. It wasn't something, uh, you know, crazy and grotesque or anything. Uh, it was done very subtle and very beautiful and, you know. So, I thought that was kind of nice. What's sad about that, though, is... Our, our man Flynn, he lost another woman, you know? God. One thing you don't want to be is his woman. It's bad luck. So, yeah. It never works out, guys. Once again, Flynn completes another mission. And we also find out a little bit about Judson uh, that we might not have known, but we might have maybe thought. But, yeah, we figured some stuff out there. Um, all right, so final thoughts guys, let's go into that. Final thoughts on this movie. This movie wraps up our journey nicely. Adding in the vampire element was different and fun. We didn't travel far in this final film, but we get a decent adventure here close to home. We get some light history and folklore and mystery along the way as well. That's kind of how I feel about this movie. It's a good movie. Along with the other two. So, kind of sticking to that. Here's my final thoughts on all the films. These three movies are great fun rides. Family friendly and give a great sense of adventure. We get to really connect with our three main characters. And our side characters. The writing, directing, the locations, the myths. The stories, the legends, the folklore, all that stuff are all great and fun and make you use your imagination, uh, which is always fun to do uh, with these kind of movies. The musical score through all three films is captivating and always uh, it always fits the moment. They did a really, really solid job uh, throughout the entire uh, trilogy with... Uh, all the musical scores. I mean, you really feel like you're on adventure, and when subtlety is needed, they got the music there, and just different things along the way. They did a really good job, and I, I appreciate that. The acting. The little bits of humor and lightheartedness are perfect. Uh, the serious tones are there. Uh, there's moments of confusion. There's moments of doubt. There's moments of anger and sadness, and, and all these different things, and it, it's all done really well, and uh, and I like humor, uh, splashes of humor throughout these kind of movies too. Even I Indiana Jones has like that little quirky, weird kind of humor kind of thrown in a little bit here and there. Uh, there might be a little bit more lightheartedness in this uh, uh, trilogy, in this librarian uh, trilogy. And I like that though. I can't say enough about these uh, films. I'm a huge fan. If you like Indiana Jones, National Treasure... Tomb Raider, and other adventure films, you will love these movies. And believe me, you will. Uh, to me, they're not dated. Of course, the CGI and, and stuff like that that they use in the blue screens and all that aren't quite up to par. And they weren't exactly up to par, really, even back when they came out. But, you know what? They're made for TV movies. Uh, they were on TNT and 
uh, I think for probably their budget and what they could do and all that, I think that they did a great job. I know if I made the films, I'd be ecstatic. I'd be happy. So, anyway. <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, also, watch and support the TNT... Ooh. Well, Mike, let's go ahead and introduce this, shall we? This one's an empty page. All right. Let's go ahead and dig into this one. Ready? Surprise. There is a The Librarians, with an S at the end, TV series. You might not have seen it. You might not have known anything about it. But, uh, it did last four seasons. And it did run on TNT as well. Uh, it came out in 2014 to 2018. They follow more uh, of the magic and mystery uh, of the artifacts. They follow kind of the, uh, the library a little bit more. And uh, they, they give us some great characters. Uh, and we also get cameos from Bob Newhart and Jane Curtin and uh, Noel Weil is still in uh he comes back and he's actually in several episodes throughout and to be honest the best episodes are the ones with him uh he just there's there's a something about his acting and the way he portrays the librarian and you get that from the very first movie so he brings that still into this series you know a few years later and uh it was really cool to see him in there. And it was really cool to see Bob Newhart and Jane Curtin as well. Now there is some uh, conflicting info that I found. Uh, one place said that they that the series came out in 2013 to 18. And another one says 14 to 18. I think it's 14. Now I watched it day one. Uh, the premiere episode, whatever, you know. Uh, I watched it day one until, uh, until the last episode. I uh, just don't exactly remember when it started, but I'm going to say probably 14. Uh, so I just wanted to fill you in on that, that there actually is a little continuation of the story. And actually, in The Librarians, you actually find out a little bit more about uh, Judson and Charlene. And how important that they truly are to the library. So I think that's pretty cool. I suggest watching it. It's good fun. It's a nice continuation uh, from the from the three movie trilogy. So anyway, guys, that's it. That's my wrap up of the Librarian trilogy made for TV movies uh, that came on TNT 2004, 2006, 2008. So there you go. I hope you enjoy it. Um, go back. And check out my playlist for the movie review, uh, TV review uh, playlist. And uh, you'll find uh, not only these other two movies in there, but you'll find a few other things in there. Uh, I really don't like calling it a review, and I do review some, but I'm not a great reviewer. I'd rather just talk about the stuff. I think I'm better just talking about it. Uh, I'm not a great reviewer, so I'd rather just keep it more entertaining and talk about the, the movies and TV shows and stuff like that. So, anyway, guys, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Go check out all my videos, not just the movie and TV review stuff. Go look at my playlist. You're going to see a host of all kinds of goodies in there, okay? If you can't find something on Mikey Sent TV, you're not going to find anything on YouTube or TV, for that matter, that's any good. Because I cover it all, and it's beautifully done. Anyway, guys, don't forget, get up, get out, get red, do it to it, and go watch these movies and have yourself a great time doing it, and then watch the series, okay? We'll see y'all later. Bye! <sighs> Arthritis. Get up, get out, get ran, and do it, do it!